San Francisco, it's Rex Broadcasting Wrestling Observer with Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on! How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. Second hour, Samoa Joe, who's coming off some of the best matches of the year, uh, one which we saw on uh, last month's TNA pay-per-view with three-way with AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, and another which we haven't seen yet with uh, Kenta Kobashi that people who have seen say is a better match than the other one. So we'll be talking to him about uh, upcoming things, including his match with Jushin Liger on the TNA uh, Bound for Glory pay-per-view, which is this coming Sunday, and uh, some other things going on with him. So that's second hour, first hour. We're going to mostly be taking phone calls. We do have one line open at 1-800-878-PLAY, so you can hop on board. Brian, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. That's good. You know, last two weeks have been quite interesting. The the last time we did this show was uh, October 7th. October 2nd, I mean, which was the day before the Monday Night War. And um, it turned out to be quite an interesting two weeks. Um, we're, we're now with a weird situation with the Raw announcing um, and uh, UFC announcing, and it all intertwined. And uh, when we were... On the show, remember how I kept saying how um, Vince is going to do a dirty trick <laughs> the night the night before? Yeah. Well, that was the dirty trick. Well, he didn't. But pull he didn't. It off. He didn't pull. He, he didn't pull it off. He and I found think, a man who was above the carny world of pro wrestling, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. He tried to hire Mike Goldberg. Tried to have him no show the uh, the UFC live event. Show up in Austin and uh, where where um, brawl was taking place and. Be the new announcer for Raw. It didn't quite work out according to Vince, you know, as Vince McMahon planned it. And uh, apparently, he's been in a very bad mood ever since. And I think we've we've Uh-oh. seen we've seen that. Yeah, he was in a very angry mood on Monday. Yeah, a very angry mood, and it was a it was so weird. And we talked about this a little bit before the show started. But what's happening? I don't know. No one knows. It's so strange. It. it it seems like it has to be an angle. Oh, everyone thinks it's an angle except for the people who wrote it. Yeah. And still may be, but... <laughs> and think about that. They wrote that thinking that was the end of Jim Ross. Well, but, 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 I mean, but, but here's the thing. I mean, there's not a question in the world that the end of Jim Ross was supposed to be September 26th. I mean, not, not a question. Because Mike Goldberg was supposed to start on October 3rd. Mm-hmm. So... As far as, you know, people going like, you know, oh, it's just like a, a thing. I mean, they offered a guy a three-year contract. I mean, there's, there's not even a question about that. So Jim Ross was supposed to be gone. But uh, as far as what's going to happen now, anyone's guess, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, we will be back with more. Uh, I said one line open, 1-800-878-PLAY. We'll start taking calls in uh, just a couple of minutes, talking about uh, what's going on in pro wrestling including, if you didn't see it last night, the skit on TNA. And uh, we got a uh, Pride pay-per-view coming up a week from Monday. So we got another crazy Monday coming up, uh, not this week, but next week. And not only that, but also, uh, of course, TNA Bound for Glory on Sunday. So, and Taboo Tuesday in a week or in a week after that. So uh, a lot of craziness coming up. You listen to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly. We're here every Sunday night, 8, 10 Eastern, 5 to 7 Pacific, on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network, talking pro wrestling. And uh, it's... <laughs> you didn't see the skit, Brian? No, I haven't seen the skit yet, sadly, but I've heard a lot about it. Oh, it was just... Uh, it was tremendous. It was one of the... They, you know, I mean, the whole thing was going down, and it was really good. Uh, it was the funeral for the Dudleys, or the former Dudleys, for Team 3D. And it was uh, Team Canada, Abyss, Jim Mitchell was doing the uh, eulogy, and Chris Harrison, James Storm, and Gail Kim and Jeff Jarrett were also in the audience. And um, I bet that was a hell of a eulogy. Jim Mitchell was tremendous. Yeah. The, the gist of the eulogy was that these carpetbaggers came in to uh, you know, get on our glory that we built for three years, and they came, Johnny Come Lately's, and we got rid of them. Um, done much better than that. And Harris and Storm are in the back drinking beer and, and Storm's going. He's got to go to the bathroom and, um, 
then they come out and do a eulogy um and it was just the line i mean the line of all lines was when uh Storm goes, you know, I hear um, I hear dead people, uh, you know, Bubba's talking to us from the grave saying, Devon, get the, and then Jeff Jarrett goes, you know, like, um, um, their careers are already over. They don't need another lawsuit. I mean, that, that one was too good. I didn't see that one. I didn't know that one was coming. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, you know, Spike's kind of gotten cold feet on this one, but, you know, one thing you got to say is, is TNA's like sneaking them in now. Yeah. You know, Why, I mean, what, what's Spike's deal? They, I don't think they want to insult WWE on their TV. Are they afraid WWE is going to insult them back from the USA Network? No, I just think that they think that it's. Um, I just think think they don't want to get involved in that. They just want to. Um, I just don't think they want to get involved in that. Although I think Spike's. Um, you know, now that Impact is doing so much of a better rating than Velocity, and that last week, of course, you know, we really don't know um, what's going to happen in weeks to come. But but last week in eighteen to forty nines. Without WWE, Spike was actually up from with WWE, which was because they did a million UFC specials during the week. Um, they're all of a sudden thinking, you know, that WWE loss was not nearly what everyone predicted it would be. But then again, if you, you know, one of the one of their problems is, is they, you know, you can't overexpose UFC and think that it's going to um, bail you out forever. Yeah, because it's not going to draw you the three point five rating that Raw will. Um, you, they just do so many shows of it, but. All those shows, that's going to work in reverse anyway because they're they're overexposing that product on television, I think. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we had the Monday Night Wars, and uh, the uh, I thought that the UFC did not do well. Um, ra- Rating-wise was fine, but, I mean, I just thought show-wise. I thought the show the, itself was not good. Yeah, I think the show was unprepared. I thought WWE did a great show, which in the long run probably did them, I don't want to say more harm than good, but maybe more harm than good because I'm guessing that the buy rate from last Sunday was all-time record low. Um, that's my guess. And uh, so in the long run, you know, they didn't make any money. They lost money doing the show. They don't make any ad money. Um, buy rates all-time low. So I don't know that that's a positive. You know, no one's going to the house shows. Um, so uh, I don't know that that was a, a wise move to throw everything out there in the one night. But, you know, I mean, on the positive side, Hulk Hogan did challenge Steve Austin. on you know, Sort front, of. In front of the largest crowd. I, I thought he pretty much did. Well, he did, but it was one of those things where they they had to cut Hogan short, and I think the way that it was done, I think when it was over, it was the, the impact had been lessened so much that in three weeks, I think people could have forgotten about it. Oh, I think they forgot about it the week after well, because it was, because it was never followed up on at all on on Monday show. Yeah, and then Monday show was exactly. I mean, when that show started, and Stephanie McMahon was out there doing that promo, I'm going like, oh boy. <laughs> oh little boy. did you know oh boy remember this remember this stephanie mcmahon and then the uh long triple h promo that he could have done in two minutes and then the 20 minutes it seemed like if not more i think what how long was that thing at the end with with vincent stephanie and linda and jim ross and oh god i didn't time it but it had to be 12 minutes oh no it had to be longer than because i think they started about a quarter till and they went off the air at like 10 after. They went off because they went way late. They That's went... right, because my, my TiVo stopped recording it. I missed Linda. Yeah. I had to go back and find it on their website. But, yeah, it went it went a long time to accomplish the goal of Linda McMahon getting the most heat of anybody on the show. Linda McMahon is a heel, which is just like Linda And Mc... then she did that interview on WWE.com. Oh, well, what was it? I, I, I mean, I read it, but, that I, you know, that's just... You know, to me, that's just what it well, is. Well, yeah, but I mean, the fact that she did that means she's coming back. Oh, no, they're all going to be on TV Monday. Yeah. No, no, the, all the McMahons and, you know, maybe Shane will go babyface, maybe not. But it's just like, oh, my God, that McMahon family thing's coming back. And, uh, boy, boy, oh, boy, it's TNA could not have picked a better time to get on television. That's on, for sure. You know, I mean, they are, they're, they're in a, they, 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 you know, because they have a network that, actually wants them to succeed rather than just putting them in there, which at another time, that's what it would have been. Um, they've got, uh, you know, I think that they're going to have a, a, a very big disgruntled WWE fan base, and they're the alternative, yeah, for better or for worse. And they are an alternative. They're, yeah, they're a viable alternative. You know, and, and, and they're doing better pay-per-views in WWE. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that uh, this coming Sunday's pay-per-view, uh, it could not possibly be worse than... Last Sunday's pay-per-view. <laughs> it would be impossible. 
Well, oh yeah, for sure. With the lineup they've got, yes. Yeah, no, come on, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. No, there's no way. There's no way. There's, yeah. they, they could have, they could be on, a, they can have an off night, and they're going to be better than you know. And, and Samoa Joe and Liger. I mean, you know, at worst they're only going to have a very good match. You know, at best they're going to have a great match. And there was nothing, there was nothing good on that last pay per view. I didn't think. And we haven't even gotten to SmackDown, but that's another issue. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, can share. The midgets, yes. The midgets are coming. Yeah, the midgets are coming on uh, SmackDown. That's the plan to, uh, I guess, fight the X Division. Yes. The that's, minis. That's They're going to be called the juniors. The juniors, yeah. Yes, under five feet tall. They're recruiting people from Mexico as we speak. And, in fact, they want, they want more. This was a funny one. They want more uh, Mexican wrestlers on the roster. And uh, one wrestler in the company mentioned this to me yesterday and said, you know, they have a super crazy and Juventud Guerrera who are tremendous, who get no push. So why don't we just push them if we need more Mexican stars? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's doing more thinking than anyone else, basically. Uh, five seconds? Probably so. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, 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 the minis, I, I mean, I... I I don't know. Every time WWE has has done that one, because they, you know, they brought the minis in. What what year? Do you know what was yours? And they did it once or twice. It would have been ninety seven. Remember with uh, what was the? What did they call the guy? I mean, it was Zuki, but they called him by a different name. Max Mini, right? Max. There was Max Mini, and there was like Mini Vader. Mini Vader, who was, and and they called him Torito sometimes too. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So they brought them in, and um, you know, and Max Mini was really good, but he turned out to be. You know, a comedy figure, and it meant nothing. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, we'll see. Times are a changing fast, which we knew was going to happen. It's going to happen for the rest of this year, and there's going to be a lot of big changes. Okay, Shamrock Sakuraba. Oh, Shamrock. You think so? Well, I think so because I think that I think in a lot of ways they're very similar, and I think that Shamrock's going to be much bigger, and I think that the weight that Sakuraba's gain is going to work against him, and I think they're both beaten up. But I think Shamrock's going to pull it off. Going to be interesting. I mean, it's, that's the one that nobody wants to predict the outcome of. Really? Well, I did. Yeah. Mirko Krokop and Josh Barnett. Uh, I'm going to say Krokop. I will, too. I have not seen Barnett fight in a year. Well, no one else has either. Yeah, and last time he got hurt, who knows how he is, so I'm not going to uh, bet against Krokop. Okay, we're going to go ahead to a break. We'll start taking phone calls in just a minute. You're listening to the Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly. We're here every Sunday night, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Want to remind you, if you're looking for the latest in up-to-date wrestling information, um, you can always go to www.wrestlingobserver.com. There is there's uh, daily news updates as well as breaking news all throughout the day, um, reviews of all the television shows as well as information that has subscribed to both the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that I put out every week and Figure Four Weekly that Brian puts out every week. And if you subscribe, you can still get the issue that I did a couple of weeks ago. There's info on uh, in the uh, headline section. Just look at the uh, preview of tomorrow's issue, and there will be information on how to not only get tomorrow's issue and all the stuff, all the background and what happened with Jim Ross and Monday on Raw and all that, um, what happened behind the scenes to cause, what happened, and also the issue on the Ultimate Warrior that I did about a week ago, which is one of the best issues of the year. And if you got the DVD, you pretty much have to get that issue because um, it answers all the questions from the DVD. And uh, anyway, did you read that issue? Yeah, it was very good. Oh, thank you very much. Especially and the man who grew up on the Ultimate Warrior. The what? A man who grew up on the Ultimate Warrior. Oh, that's true. That's right. You did. He was your favorite wrestler when you were a kid. Yeah. So what did you think? Well, I knew every. I, I, I should say no. I knew everything, but I knew I knew Warrior was crazy. So. Uh, well, that's not a secret. I. Um, How about Vince? I mean, there was stuff in there on Vince that uh, you know. I had a lot. There was a lot of stuff there on Vince when you put it all in perspective. It was just a very interesting look at Vince's perception. But you know what it says, and it's 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 something that we've talked about a million times. If you sign a contract, if Vince signs you to a contract on his terms, then he expects you to 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 uphold it. But if Vince signs a contract, but he's unhappy with the contract, in his mind, he believes that 
he doesn't have to be held to that contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of a unique way of looking at things. But we've, we've seen that one uh, more than once. Let's talk about the boogeyman. The boogeyman started on SmackDown on Friday night, which probably nobody saw because people stopped watching SmackDown. And um, he was there. <laughs> he was there. He was there in red paint, and they tried to blame it on UPN. So if he flops, it's UPN's fault. Well, you know, the one thing I, I was entertained about was the fact that at least there is a built-in excuse for why he can't work. Yeah. He's not a wrestler. He's an actor. Yeah. An actor on a failed sitcom, apparently, or he lost his mind or something. Um, who, who plays the boogeyman. Yeah. Yeah. It was the strangest thing. And, and especially when you have the network guy going, show him what you can do. And that was being the boogeyman. Yeah. That's a gimmick. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I was excited to see that in an upcoming Ohio Valley, it's the boogeyman versus Blaster Lashley. I've, I have a, I, I've, I've already seen that. How is it? It's only two minutes. And it's, I have an intense desire to see that. It's, 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 it's nothing to see. Oh. I mean, it wasn't like it was terrible or anything. It was just two minutes. It was very very choreographed to where... I'm stunned. To where, like, you know, not, nothing really could have gone wrong and nothing did go wrong. Yeah. The last OBW, the one that you'll be seeing next, um, a lot of short matches and, and long promo segments and things like that. I mean, storyline-wise, very good. I mean, no... No wrestling to speak of. Now, did you see the uh, the thirty minute Ken Doan um, Albright match? Yes, and this is what I've got to say: we are on completely different pages with Ohio Valley lately. Uh huh. I cannot handle these thirty minute matches. Uh, oh, I thought I liked that one. Oh my gosh! It, it was going along fine, and then sort of at about the twenty minute mark, when they did the first restart, I was going, "This is starting to drag a little." And then by about the third restart or whatever it was, I was dying for something to happen. It was it was too long for my short attention span. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. But, uh, I mean, this is what I would say about Ohio Valley and Heyman. Everybody has a purpose. There seems to be a point to everything that's happening. I just, some of these matches are too long for me, and it makes the show seem in drag. Well, every match with Shelly Martinez is too long. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't think I've seen her in the ring yet. <laughs> they're never long, but they're just too long. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and they're bringing people up left and right. Oh, no, you didn't see. The blonde bombers aren't blonde anymore. Well, they're, they're the streaked bombers. Yeah. The street, yeah, that was something else. But, I mean, to me, to me, one of the appeals of Chad Tolan, who... Is that he's Chad. Is that he's Chad, and he has that 1970s <laughs> pro wrestler hairdo. Yep. And then they brought him up, and he looks different from everybody else. And they brought him up, and then the first thing they do is they... They had to make him current. They cut his hair, and then they made him look like everybody else in the roster. Yep. So now he's just another short bodybuilder. Like, they've got tall bodybuilders all over the place. And really, I mean, standing there when he was on that thing, he was just a, a short guy. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing. No no great, no look, no nothing. Just done. Maybe, maybe they're going to be the next in the junior division. I don't think so. They're, they're close. They're five inches above the limit. Yeah, I know, but I don't I don't see that. Although maybe they'll He looks like Dave Draper, or he used to. Uh Chad? Yeah, remember Dave Draper? Oh, I, I know Dave Draper. Yeah. He, he's from he's from Santa Cruz. Um Yeah, I mean a little bit, I guess. He sort of had that look going on. Yeah, in the in the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> Not Dave Draper today. Um no. <laughs> no. Hey Hunter was at the Olympia last night. Yes, he was. <laughs> He doesn't know who, um... God, now I forgot, too. What? what Johnny you Swinger. That poor guy. No oh. one remembers him. Johnny Swinger, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. They asked Hunter about uh, Johnny Swinger, and he didn't know who he was, and... Oh, well. That that nice career guy. Sucks to be him. Uh, it sure does. Okay, we're going to Mitch and Ber Mitch in Berkeley. Mitch, what's going on? Hey, how are you guys? Uh, doing really good. I've been pretty jaded on the product. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, you know, we're doing fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know. I actually can't hear Mitch, so if anyone is listening that can help me. Okay. Just let him know yeah. that everything I'm saying is just fantastic, and that if every caller could sound encompass what I encompass, you know, that... Well, you better say happy. something to follow that. Well, let me tell you this. I just want to know, is there any chance that TNA would take Ross? Is there, no, 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 because they probably would. Is there any chance that Ross would go to TNA and that that, that could happen? Uh, that's a weird one. Um, I'm sure that no matter what happens, it couldn't happen now. Right. 
you know, because it, no matter what happens, if he isn't brought back, there's going to be that non-compete thing going on. Right, um, right. Plus, he's having surgery this week. So, right. so he ain't going to be ready for a while. So nothing's going to happen imminently. I would, you know, you never say never. I would, right. I would say less than fifty percent, though. But you think best based on the the way that they're playing it on the website that he, they're going to work him back in somehow. That's your I, I have that thought. I have thought all week he's coming back, and people who know far more about it than me are insisting that this time I'm wrong. So we'll find out. Wow. Time will you, time will tell. I can just say in Ross's defense that. Uh, <laughs> that wrestling can be without Ross, you know? <laughs> I mean, nobody, everyone is just stunned, you know? Yeah, you know what's funny is, is like, they... My wife is stunned, Dave. <laughs> you know what? My wife is stunned, too. <laughs> About what? That, uh, that, that, there, that, that there could be Raw on Monday night and Jim Ross really would never be on it again. Yeah. I mean, it's like, that's one of the few constants is that voice. Right. You know? And, I mean, it's the funniest part of the whole thing is, um, again, like... No matter what ends up happening, the bottom line is is they did want him gone. I mean, that's not even a question. And it boggles my mind because they're, like, pointing at the wrong, you know, the wrong thing's wrong with the show. Right. You know, it's like, it's, it's like oh, my well, God. Well, that's Vince's whole thing. It's so, he's always finding something that's wrong that's not the issue. Yeah, because the... The dress code. Well, that... Was Ross out because of his presentation or because he moved to Oklahoma and didn't stay in Greenwich? I mean, everything plays a part in it. I can't say it's any one thing, and I'm sure there's there's ten more things just like that. Right, right. You, you know, I think that I think that the the age thing. I'm sure moving didn't help. I'm sure, you know, they got they got a love hate relationship, and you know, there's people in that family that wanted him out real bad for a long time, and it's it's just one of those things where. Uh, so he's not doing any more work in the office. He's not doing any. Well, he, 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 he can't. I mean, I mean, there's, there, you, no. I mean, he, he, John John Laurinaitis took over um, his office work uh, this gotcha. week. So gotcha. you know, but I mean, as far as like, again, you know, we'll find. You know, two months from now, three months from now, we're going to we'll know. Well, actually, actually, there's a pretty good chance that this week or next week we'll know because depend if if they just do nothing but talk about it on TV tomorrow, then you got to figure it's an angle. If right. they like mention it once and then you know like just move on. Uh, that's an indication that it, it's probably not an angle. Right, like but, the Hogan thing. But it depends on, like, and then the week after. I mean, you'll, you'll be able to see the signs of how they do it, you know. If they, but if they bring the midget out dressed like Jim Ross, that, that's <laughs> not a sign that he's coming back because they did that with Bret Hart. They did that with Bret Hart, right. Yeah, which, by the way, by the way, I, I, I watched Wrestling with Shadows the other night because a couple of friends wanted to see it. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Oh, you know, every time you watch it, you notice something new. That's all. I see. Yeah. Well, let me ask well you, is, perspective. Is there anything to look look forward to in WWE as far as angles and programs right now? Because I'm completely, utterly. I, I I don't I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Um, There's nothing on the horizon. That sounds good to you. <laughs> well, I mean, let's see. The next pay per view is going to have Ric Flair and Triple H. I I I've got to presume Ric Flair is going to do a great interview tomorrow night. Yeah, me too. He, he, you know, he better because if he doesn't, because Triple H's interview was was all right, but yep. it needed. To, I thought it needed to be a little bit better. It needs to be accelerated, absolutely. Yeah. So that but that I mean, that that, that, that a million times more or less. Yeah, but that 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 program's something different and new, and so hopefully, yeah. hopefully that'll be good. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, things always happen. Things change. Uh, and what about uh, TNA? Will the Deadlies? Uh, are they going to add MW in 3D? Or are they going to they're going to build up to that for a while and have them do a run in at the pay per view? What's what's well, the They can't beat the pay per view. They're in Japan, so they're uh, okay. they're not going to beat the pay per view this week. But um, uh, you know, obviously they're going to do a match. You know, sooner than later. You know, and they'll build it up. Yeah. Are three. Are this 3D? Are they going to? Are they signed to TNA? Or are they just yeah. going to be an occasional thing? No, no, no. They're signed, but they also have commitments in Japan, so they're not going to be full time. And would you think that they would, that TNA would take Ross if they could get him, or do they have the? I mean, because it seems like they take any of the ex guys, or do they have the philosophy that hey, we want to build these unknown guys that are fantastic instead of you know reaping off these old guys? But I, 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 I don't. I, Nash, so I don't know if, what the philosophy is. If it's available, I don't know that he would go. Uh -huh. And it's a real weird thing because the the spot that Ross would get if he goes would be Mike Tanay's spot, and um, Mike Tanay's got a lot of power there right now, well, and he's, he's and he's and he's really good. 
I mean, they couldn't add Ross in there, or, or you know, and have a three-way, or get rid of West. I just West is okay. I just don't believe him because I saw him selling baseball cards. So <laughs> I, know, I know he's a good guy. I know Tanner vouches for him. I know Jared vouches for him. I'm, you know, I, I mean well when I say this, and I and I, and I like the guy. And I, he's trying hard, but I can't believe him because he sold snake oil for three years. Yeah, well, I can understand that. I got to say this: that 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 that. The one thing you can say is that in the three years he's been there, he's improved a whole lot more than um, a lot of other people have in the last three years. You've got to be talking about Don West, and I don't even know what you're talking about. We're talking, <laughs> we're talking about Don West as an announcer. That's right. Well, there you go. Okay. Hey, we thank got, you so much, you guys. I appreciate the time. Okay, we've got to head to a break right now. We're back with more right after this. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly. We are going to go to Ed in San Antonio. Ed, what's going on? Uh, hey, guys. Uh, Dave, uh, first off, let me uh, po- apologize for making a mistake on the, on the Shane Twins instead of the Tolans. Okay, no problem. I had just never seen an either team, and when they came out, they looked so similar. I thought they, you know, I just assumed they were the Shane Twins. Yeah, yeah, on the SmackDown tapings last night. I mean, that they're on a Friday night, yeah. Is that the penis costumes on? <laughs> I guess without them, nobody would recognize them, right? That's right. Yeah, they look exactly alike, uh, the, the Shane Twins, even without the costume. Um, and uh, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they probably will be up sooner than later also. Uh-huh. But I am glad it is the Tolans. I'm looking, you know, forward to them a lot more. Uh, you uh, should, you should look forward to them more than the than the Shane twins. I will say that. Uh-huh. And uh, I thought SmackDown was a, a really good show. It's a shame that they didn't have shows like this leading up to the pay per view. They probably have some more buy rates coming their way. But I thought it was a good start to kick things off. They, you know, they set up new feuds. Everything looked pretty good. Yeah, um, they they got stuff set up for Tuesday. You know, with uh, Booker T and Chris Benoit with Charmel in the middle and. Um, what was the other one? Um, the or- uh, Eddie Matt, Gr- Hardy, Matt Hardy on uh, on the Peep Show. Yeah, Matt Hardy's going to debut on SmackDown this week, and then the uh, uh, Batista and Eddie Guerrero against uh, the Ortons, which actually, eh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> that one's on. I don't know how good that's going to be, but if it, you know, maybe it'll be the angle where Eddie turns on uh, Batista. Maybe. Uh, well, the, uh, the, the, what they did on uh, on SmackDown is like when they cut off the TV, they went straight. They actually had the tag match and. Right. It really wasn't that great. I mean, it was cool seeing Bob, you know, sell like he and kind of sell like he used to. But it was, it only lasted a couple minutes, and it was mainly Bob was mainly in there. Yeah. And so, uh, why would that be? I'm sorry. Why? Why would that? I mean, if Randy and Bob are t- teaming, you know, you would think that Randy should be in most of the match. You yeah. Would, well, I guess, like I say, it only lasted a few minutes. I guess they just wanted to go ahead and finish it up and leave on a high note, you know. Yeah. Crowd. And uh, they, cause they just, they just did one spot where uh, Batista accidentally hit Eddie, and Eddie was kind of like, you know, what was up, but it didn't lead to anything. And then they, you know, they ended up winning the match with a frog splash. Yeah. So I, I kind of think that's what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's not going to last more than, you know, four or five minutes on on this coming show. Yeah, I, I think that it's got to be the big angle because they're doing a uh, Batista Eddie Guerrero rematch, and if they're doing one, they have to, they can't go in with the same buildup as the last one. I mean, they just cannot do that. Uh huh. Yeah, and uh, another thing I want to talk about from SmackDown is when you see somebody on TV and they're really big and jacked up, it's, it's impressive. But I kind of say when you're like within 15 feet of somebody like Bobby Lashley, I mean, that just blew my mind. He just was so uh, physically imposing and impressive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember the first time. Do you remember the first time he showed up, Bobby Lashley, on OBW, Brian? Yes. I mean, it was just like, wow. He was about 15 feet tall. Remember that? Yeah, they shot him, they shot him well, too, because they made him look like he was like 6'4". And um, I remember just looking at him, going like, "Oh my God, this guy is going to be a superstar for sure." And um, then he shrunk. He shrunk, but you know they also brought him up too fast. That's true. You know, which is funny because Big Dave even said that. He did. Yeah, he said they brought him up too fast, and he's a guy who would know because they brought him up too fast too. Although I guess he doesn't have many good, good things to say about OVW. Well, they've done a good job with Lashley so far. Yeah, 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 yeah. They haven't. Expl- they, they could have. Really, it's going to be hard to screw him up. Well, yeah, also because he's the, he's the kind of guy they love. Yeah, you know, so that helps too. Yeah, especially if he keeps throwing people out of the ring like this and Nunzio. I mean, that was just such an awe from the crowd when he did that because we were right, we were like I say about fifteen. Yeah, it went awesome for Nunzio. 
Yeah, I really, and it really, from my angle, it looked like Vito was supposed to catch him because it looked like he put his arm up and then he went out. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that, the, I, I don't know. I don't think he was supposed to, I, I, I don't know. I, I watched that spot. Brian, did you see SmackDown? I did. Do you think that he was supposed to catch him on that spot? You know what? I think he was. Okay. But I think what happened was... But boy, because he sure didn't come close. I think what happened was very early on he realized he was out of position, like as Nunzio was falling. He was out, He was way out of position. And I think that he sort of just realized, I'm not going to lunge for it to make it look like I screwed up. I, I'm, there's no way I'm getting him, so I'm sorry. Well, nice. That's sort of what it looked like. Uh, that's, I could be wrong. Yeah, that's, that's nice of your Nunzio waiting for someone to catch you and then being caught by the floor. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that, was, that was pretty sick. I mean, it was. I was right there... But uh, overall, you know, I'm ho hopefully SmackDown will go in a good direction. Uh, it needs to. I mean, it's been such a lame duck for like, like almost two months, maybe. Yeah, more than that. And I, mean, I tell you what, also the the ratings the ratings on Friday now. You know, it was like we talked about. It's got to be when we get to October, we're going to see what it really is. The early ratings didn't mean anything. Now we're in October, and um, it isn't good. It is not. It's not good. Well, the, yeah. the, the raw number. I think the raw number. I said it was going to be tomorrow's raw number. That's the one that counts. But I think that there might be. A little bit of curiosity coming from the Jim Ross thing, and that, and they may get one more good rating. Um, and but but whatever, I think a week from tomorrow, most likely whatever that number is, will be um, kind of indicative of where it's going to fall, which which may be slightly higher than, um, you know, slightly higher than it was on uh, on Spike. Not much. I oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I sent Brian uh, earlier this week the new updated numbers of um, homes that are in, that are spike in USA Network. Yep. I mean, it's you know, I mean, it's just a funny, it's a funny thing because basically the number is like exactly the same. I mean, there's like actually spikes on more Not because even exactly the same as in eighty-seven to eighty-eight million. No, 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 no. It's like ten ten thousand off. Yeah. But um, actually, there's more homes that get spiked because of Canada, but that's irrelevant because spike was preempted because of TS. I mean. The wrestling was preempted because of TSN. But basically, as far as, like, the number of homes available, the exact same homes get USA that get Spike, and there's no difference. And I don't know why, you know, well, I do know why, but there's, there's, it's just, like, one of those things that they say, like like their TV commercial about Raw being the highest rated um, commercial. I mean, the, the, the Raw from last from the third being the highest rated Raw in three years, when, in fact, it was the highest rated Raw in three months. <laughs> well, I they have no problem with stretching the truth. Yeah, well, that's true. Oh, my God. Oh, the other thing. <laughs> Yes, uh, Dave. I had one more thing before I go. Okay. Uh, are, do we know if they're signing the minis and stuff to contracts, or could they just be coming in for like a one night thing and have a six man? Mm, they're, they're, they they're they want they they want to sign them to contracts. Okay. Yeah, I was just kind of worried they're going to be sent to the boogeyman, you know, or something. Uh, they might be. Actually, now that you bring it up, SmackDown, I can I can see that one. He can work with the minis, Lucha style. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for taking my call, guys. Okay. Very good. What were you going to say now? You were very excited about something. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Brian, the other thing you got to look out for is the Morphoplex commercial, which you're probably going to see a hundred times in the next month. Not the one on this show, but the one on uh, TNA. Is it a good one? Oh, it's, you just have to see it. Does it feature Larry? Oh, Larry's all over it, yeah. Okay, good. Well, I'm excited then. But uh, the, the closing line is the line, boy. I'll just tell you that. So watch out for that closing line. Anyway, uh, we're going to go to Sam in Ohio. Sam, what's happening? Not much, man. Uh... Just wondering, what's your guys' opinion on the uh, mini thing? Because I, I just think it's an awful move. It probably will be. Mm -hmm. I, I just. But yeah, no, I mean, the number one, because they don't know how to. Um, you know, their history has shown that they don't know how to do it. And number two, they got the wrong ring. They got that. That's a good one. And a lot. Of, and you know what else, Brian? You know, they don't even. Know, they don't. I, no one's in that company has probably even figured that one out. About the ring. That's terrifying because that's the that's the very first thing I thought of. Yeah, I know. When you said that, I there was someone who I talk with all the time, and we were make because because usually what we usually do every day is kind of come up with things in TNA and um, and and WWE and kind of things that like we kind of come up with in ten seconds and we wait you know the month before they figure it out. And uh, this was your example when you when you said about the ring. It's like man, they're never going to figure that out. And you you know you got it the minute you saw. It. The minute you saw that news story, you emailed me right back. What about the ring? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure that they, to this day they haven't figured that out yet. And they won't until someone slips and falls on their head. Yep, which may happen tomorrow. Or Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, time will tell. We'll see how they do it. I mean, history is not kind to their uh, portrayal of small guys. And, um, you know, Vince's sense of humor when it comes to minis is just, you know, to have them play the, the roles of children. And it gets... It's okay for a few times, and it gets old real fast, but we'll see. We'll see what happens this time. Um, 
you know? I, I remember like four weeks ago, um, I think it was Raw, they had Viscera. Didn't they have Viscera team up with um, a mini? And then they it, had... was, it was longer than that, but yeah, they had that um, with, the, with the weird name, yeah. Oh, my God, I'd totally forgotten about that. Yeah. Oh, you know what? They'll probably have him work with the Mexicans. Yeah, he's a mini. He's a mini? Yeah, oh, my God. The crowd was just dead in that whole match, if I remember right. Oh, yeah, well, that was uh, weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, and... well, well, we'll have to wait and see and see if that's the answer to the ratings woes of SmackDown is um, bring minis in every week. Yeah. Maybe everyone now is too big. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dave's fault. Anything else, Sam? Um, yeah. Uh, I, uh, there was another name thrown around the JR thing. Um, that was Joey Styles. Yes. Is there, is there any, uh, any chance he would come to Raw? Well, I don't want to say there's no chance, but um, I've been told there's no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you're told there's no chance, you know, it ends up happening anyway. But um, um, he did not make... You know, it's a very political situation there, as everyone knows, and he did not make any friends at all there. And he doesn't make any friends regularly on his website with them. So um, I would say, I, I mean, really, the odds are real, real long. There was a point in June where it was certainly considered that he was going to inherit that spot, and that, you know, that thinking ended very fast. Um, they just, uh, there's a lot of people that just don't want to work with him. So I, I would say, you know, Strongly unlikely, but we'll see. All right, thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, um, we are going to go to Alan in Deerfield Beach. Alan, what's happening? Hey, Dave, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Is Austin and Hogan going to happen at WrestleMania? Um, obviously Hogan wants it. I mean, I don't think it's I don't think it's 100 percent locked in stone, if that's what you right. mean. But but um, I think Vince wants it. I think that Hogan wants it, and I think Austin has said he'll go for it. So I think it's probably going to happen. Yeah. Are they are they close? Because I heard that uh, Keller. I don't know if you you know. I don't want to dispute your sources or whatever. He said there was heat between Austin and Hogan. Well, there has been in the past, right? But, but not. I mean, certainly in the past there was a yeah. lot. But um, I know that Austin is willing to work with him now. As far as finish goes, we you know we talked about it on the show many times. You know, for months about this potential match. And I mean, the reality is, is I don't know what they do for a finish. And I think that that. That's going to be, I, I believe that's going to end up being a touchy subject. Uh-huh. I have an old school question real quick. Um, you know, Bruno Sammartino and Larry Zabisco worked Wrestle Reunion too. that little, what, uh, schmas or whatever the hell they did? Yeah. Are, are they close friends or what? Oh, the... no, not at all, not at all. Is tension? Yeah, they don't, they rare, rarely talk. I mean, it's not like, you know, I, mean, I don't think they hate each other, but they don't, you know, I mean, like, I think Larry might talk to him. I don't know, almost never. Almost never. Yeah, I mean, Zabisco, Zabisco was on the show. They they haven't been close since that since that angle in 1980, believe it or not. You know, just the right. way everything went down and um, right. Yeah, they they, you know, they just they just haven't been close. Really? So I mean, when he worked that thing, I mean, was it genuine heat or you don't know? Oh, I I mean, I don't. I think that they were willing to work together. You know, right. I mean, everyone. Lots of people don't like each other that work together. So I don't think that it has anything to do with that. But you know, no, they're not they're not close. I mean, obviously, at one point they were when when Larry was right. You know, 21, 22 years old. Sure. That was 30 years ago. Wow. And I don't think they've been close for, you know. And uh, The just, match was 25 years ago, so I don't think they've been close for 25 years. Really? And, and just uh, another question real quick. Uh, Orndorff said the way he acted towards Hogan at the Hall of Fame. I mean, it, what, what was behind that? Is it an angle or what? what is well, it? it wasn't an angle. I just think that Paul was having was in a bad mood at that moment. And they uh, really not close either? Or? Um, I don't think that they're close, but I don't I, I don't know that they... That they I, I just think that Orndorff probably thought he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame and didn't right. realize that it was just uh, the Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper show, and he was yeah. he was just Sorry. you know to be in the background. There, there's been heat with them, no. I, I never heard of major heat with Hogan and Orndorff, no. You know, and I I, I just think that it might have been. I think it was more Orndorff being in a bad mood at that moment more than um, more than any heat or anything like that. Thank you. Okay. okay, we'll be back with more right after this. You're listening to Wrestling Observer live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly. Second hour, we will have Samoa Joe right after the news. We're going to go to Armando in Yuma, Arizona. Armando, what's going on? Hey, Dave and Brian, how you guys doing? Doing great. I wanted to ask you, how likely is it that Mystico will, bring, will come in? Uh, but a lot more likely today than it was three days ago. Um, 
they, you know, they want him. That was a name. I mean, they want him specifically. They want him in Sacramento tomorrow night. I don't know what's happened. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what has happened as far as if they've contacted him yet. I mean, they've had a couple of days, so I'm guessing that in a couple of days they could find him. So yeah. Remember when they did Super Astros and they didn't think Santo could work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're they're, they're gonna they're gonna think the same thing with when they see Mystico. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, but um. Who would they bring in to work with them, or, or that? I think they want him to assimilate into, uh, you know, um, the WWF style. Yeah, they they do. They would want that. Yeah, that's horrible. I, I know, that's but they, they, they'll find out. Um, but who 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 do they want him match? Who like if he did come in tomorrow? Who would they match him up against? Oh, I have no, I have no idea. I mean, maybe, or would they bring somebody else? They, in? Yeah, they they might bring somebody else in, or they might, you know. I don't know who's who's small to jury maybe to jury yeah you know I mean because because uh, you know to jury has worked lucha style yeah he'd be pretty good they, they might have a really good match yeah yeah um any other ones that they want to bring in like Wagner or I, I I mean I'm sure there's many others but I just don't know I mean Mystico the Mystico the Minis and um, uh, what was his Porky were the Porky. ones were the ones that I've heard and there's there's a couple of others that I didn't hear the names of he so. blow him away with his charisma let me tell you. Yeah, I just don't know about Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon and Porky's going to be one that I would. Although, I mean, he'll he'll love him. He'll love him, and then he'll be revolted by him yeah. very shortly thereafter. Yep. So uh, I want to see it though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Porky's Porky's always good for uh, you know once. Yep. Yep. So all right, guys. Thanks. Good right. job on both of you guys' newsletters. Oh, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, we will be back with more right after this. We've got a couple lines available at 1-800-878-PLAY, so you can hop on board. When we come back, we'll be talking with Samoa Joe. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Welcome back to Hour 2 of the Wrestling Observer with Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on! Okay, welcome back to the second hour here on Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly. Our guest in Hour 2, Samoa Joe, who's had some of the best matches in years. Three-way match on the last TNA pay-per-view with AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels was perhaps the best match in TNA history right up right up there for sure and then uh october the first in uh, new york singles match with kenta kobashi which we which we mentioned before we haven't seen but there are people who are touting it as the match of the year um atmosphere off the charts and uh then this coming sunday uh he's going to be facing jushin liger on the uh tna bound for glory pay-per-view so um what what's what's you know like uh, going into this month you know you look you're you're going to be you know going in you knew you were going to be wrestling against two of the real, you know, modern legends of Japanese wrestling, but in the United States. And what what did that mean to you? And what were you thinking going in? Um, you, you know, my, my thoughts going in were uh, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to make the most out of the opportunities that were kind of put in front of me. And um, you know, I just had a it, with uh, with Kobashi, you know, it kind of came together all perfect. And uh, you know, with Liger, I, I hope the same thing kind of comes about. So I mean. Uh, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely kind of a, a put up or shut up type of deal where uh, you're giving two really great opponents, and you really hope that uh, you make the most out of it. What's what's been your thoughts as far as, um, you know, you you went to TNA. I mean, you had a chance to go to WWE, and um, you know, the, it, you know, the, it was it's one of those things where you know when when you make a big rep as an indie guy, and then you go to you know what I guess would be considered a, a bigger promotion. There's always that skepticism of you've never proven anything, and, and are you really as good as your rep? And uh, you know, you you did a real good job in the match, like with Chris Sabin, of kind of shutting everybody up right away. But you know, did, what, did you feel a lot of pressure walking into TNA? Um, I, I felt a lot of pressure, but not necessarily from like outside forces. I mean, it was kind of more personal pressure because, I mean, I, exactly like you said, I knew going in that you know, if if, if you're an indie guy with uh, you know, uh, with the, the indie rep and what. You know that can be very deceiving, and oftentimes, you know, can 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 be kind of a a, a bad investment for companies. So, I mean, uh, even going into negotiation with TNA, I told them, "Hey, listen, you know, I I want you guys to be, you know, ecstatic when you hand me my paycheck every week." And and I mean, so far the they they have been, and I mean, it's it, it, if there was any pressure, it was kind of self-imposed. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we we're actually going to go run to a break right now. Um, before uh, we got we got a full bank of calls, we're going to take them for Joe. Um, if you want to call at one eight hundred eight seven eight play, wait until somebody hangs up, and uh, when we get off of a call, then you can jump on board. We'll be back with more right after this. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with Brian Alvarez, the figure four weekly. Our guest for the second hour here, Samoa Joe from TNA and Ring of Honor, who's uh, going to be wrestling Jushin Thunder Liger on the pay-per-view this coming Sunday. Just uh, a couple of days ago, got back from Australia. How was, uh, was that your first time there? Joe. Hello, there you are. Uh, yeah. I, I can barely hear you uh, in the intro there. So oh, yeah, oh, repeat oh. the question. Okay, um, yeah, was that your first time in Australia, You're the last tour? Uh, yeah, I, my first time visiting the country, I had a, had a great time and uh, had a lot of fun. Uh huh. Um, I mean, it was, it was an interesting tour, but uh, it, I mean, it, the, the fans were really receptive down there, and I was really surprised at how many people uh, actually had known me or, you know, had ever seen any of my work. Did, did a lot of people, like, talk to you about, like, you know, matches from TNA or Ring of Honor or? Um, a lot of a lot of surprising a surprising number of Ring of Honor fans down there, and uh, a good number of TNA fans. And I mean, uh, uh, a lot of them had seen the three way uh, with me and, and Chris and AJ, and uh, they they loved it. So I mean, it was, it was I guess it was kind of a nice precursor to going over there. Kind of it, it, it helped me out a bit, I guess. <laughs> so now they do they get it from tapes or because I don't think TNA's pay per views are on play in Australia. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think so either. You know, that, I, I had to have been through the tape circuit if, if anywhere. Wow! Wow! Um, now, a lot of people have asked me to ask you this one. What is going on, if anything, as far as going on going to Japan? Um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of been an up in the up in the air thing. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm still real good friends with Simon Inoki, and, and uh, you know, I, I know he's trying real hard to to change things around for New Japan and, and their financial situation. But um, uh, you know, it's it's it, there have been offers, but at the same time, like. Uh, not, not no real interest, and I mean nothing that would pull me away from my U.S. commitment. So I mean, um, you know, unless I can, you know, unless I can get something worthwhile for to go over there. I mean, I, I just I don't see myself going over there anytime soon. Okay. So didn't uh, clips already air of that match on Japanese TV? Uh, I, I think I think Samurai uh, aired some clips from it and stuff. Uh, you know, I, I'm mostly recap show stuff. You know, like they, they have a big recap show at the end of the night, and uh, I think uh, that's about it. But I know that they had their camera crews there filming. And I think, and they're they're waiting. I know for a fact that I think last time I spoke to Gabe that they're waiting for a cut of the match from ROH because they want to use the the, the camera shoot that they did. Oh really? Right. Yeah, because yeah. um, I think that there was a date that that one of the stations was going to air the the Kabashi match. Um, and I thought it was like the middle of this month. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, as as far as you know, well. Uh, Going, you know, what what has been? Is there anything been like a big surprise to you going to TNA, and and what's the feeling like now that you know you really are on spike? You know, I mean, for the last couple of weeks, and it's um, it's kind of a nothing short of a gigantic step for the company. A huge step for them, and um, I mean, uh, the only surprises were like how well things have gone so far. I mean, uh, I thought there would be some definitely definite stumbling blocks in the beginning. I think uh, I had a real fear that you know the, the way I like to wrestle wasn't really going to be uh, liked too much by people in the TNA office, but I mean, they've been real adamant about kind of just letting me do my thing and, and do it the way I do it and, and you know, you know, figure out matches and get into things the way I want to get into them, and I mean, I've, it's been invaluable, and I've I really enjoyed the opportunity to work there so far and be able to do that. As far as uh, the three-way from the last pay-per-view, I mean, going in, was it the match that you expected? Um, was it better than you expected coming out of it, or, you know, what were, you, what were your kind of thoughts you know, on that? It was, it was better than than what I expected. I mean, going in, um, I, I, I find myself a real horrible three-way wrestler. I mean, just, it's my personal opinion. Like, I, I just, uh, I, I just, I, you know, I can do okay in them, but I don't think I really excel in them. And, um, you know, but getting in there with AJ and Chris, you know, who, they, they are, they can, they can really put together great three-ways and we just kind of worked in stuff that, you know, we thought would work in the match and, and, you know, it, it, it was really a group effort. Like, you just, you know, between the three minds kind of spinning stuff around, uh, you know, the, the match came off relatively well. As far as, uh, you know, we were talking, I know you were like a, a big fan of, of MMA. I mean, is there anything that's been going on in MMA that um, you've kind of like uh, looked at or, or kind of tried to take or something like that or try to incorporate into what you, you know, your style? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you see all the trends, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, I guess uh, maybe a year and a half ago was really working, you know, knees from the ground and, uh, you know, that was a big deadly thing. Now you have, 
uh, you know, these great side chokes by Nogueras pulling out. And I mean, there's there's all kinds of neat stuff. I mean, if anything, I, I I'd love to use 22 million things that I see uh, uh, as far as you know uh, MMA techniques, but in reality, I mean, it's pro wrestling, and there's there's different ways to showcase things and matches, and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Where you know, pro wrestling fans really couldn't pick up the intricacies of what's going on that they're on the mat without you know kind of having a good view of it. So I mean, it, it's I, I, anything specific? No, I just you know sometimes I just kind of see situations or the way things are set up and the way things happen and and, and kind of MMA fights and stuff and. I kind of try to incorporate that, incorporate that over to the, you know, my pro wrestling, and uh, you know, it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's it's, it's all kind of a big experimentation process, I guess. Were you? Um, I know there were some. I don't know if rumors are the best way to call them, but that you were thinking of perhaps getting out of the business before the TNA thing came down. Um, yeah, I was thinking about taking a considerable amount of time off. I mean, I don't think I. I think it's pretty stupid to say retirement or I'm getting out of the business and quitting because you know. It, never really happens and you look like an absolute fool when you come back about four months later but um i uh you know i, I was i was thinking about taking some time off and just kind of you know uh digging in and and i guess doing some honest work for a living and and uh kind of get my uh my my financial situation uh a little bit better even though i was making i was making a living working indies you know i was doing well for myself and uh, i wasn't doing as well as i would like and uh i mean in general i, I like to think i have a broader world view than just my wrestling career and and uh you know it, but you know then the TNA offer came up and then a lot of other opportunities and stuff and uh you know here I am still uh doing what I love to do no no now are you, are you are you tight with Brian Danielson uh yeah okay cuz cuz at, at at somewhat similar time i think he was going through that i mean is there a, a mentality thing where um you know here you are you you basically reached the epitome of the indie level and you're having great matches and does it does it frustrate did it did it at that time let's say frustrate you that Wow, you know, I'm 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 doing this. I, I I probably couldn't do much better, and no one's calling me. And you know, what's this? You know, you know what I mean? Is, is that ever? It, it, I don't I don't really think it was so much of a a disappointment. And oh, why are why you know why am I you know I feel I'm you know doing all this great work and I'm I'm not getting you know the offers the opportunities that I want. I think it was just more of kind of looking at the industry as a whole and kind of saying, well, you know, where are there a lot of opportunities to make money or you know to build that. To build that kind of that name up uh, with, with companies that you know will be able to support you financially and, and, and give you kind of a financially viable option to to make a living off you know wrestling and um, I just didn't see a lot you know I, I like I said I, I like to try to keep my head pretty grounded and kind of you know look at my situation a, as a whole and I just didn't see a lot of opportunities in pro wrestling at the time to to make you know a, a, the amount of money that I would want to be making mm-hmm. and um, you know the that has changed drastically, but you know since then. But uh, I mean, that was kind of the real basic uh, uh, driving force behind me when I take time off. And I think that is very much the same case with Brian Danielson. I mean, just talking to him, Brian is you know a super intelligent guy. I mean, uh, you know, he's, he's going back to school now. You know, he really wants to finish up and get his degree. And and um, you know, I think that was kind of like the same driving factor to him was where he just didn't see a lot of opportunity for like a young guy, no matter how vaunted on the Indies or how decorated he is, to make a, a real decent living at pro wrestling yeah it's kind of a, a shame when you put so much into the craft i mean you know obviously you two you know to, to get to the level that you've gotten you know put more into it you know i mean it's it doesn't come by accident you know i mean you have the ability of course but um you know no one gets great in this business you know through um you know without without the hard work and, yeah through and, yeah, no nobody gets great uh, through osmosis I've, I've, I've tried trust me <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was the key you know as far as you know when you started when you started out you were um you know, you start out with UPW. What caused, or what, 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 what is there any c- certain thing that happened? May- maybe going to Japan or something that made you kind of change your style to this style. Um, uh, going to going to Japan had a lot to do with it. I mean, uh, when I went there, some of the concepts that they kind of stress in pro wrestling, as far as ideals and what they want to get across, um, are, are different than you know what we see here in the U.S., where it's you know it's it's, it's you know, it's more structured to a heel baby face type of dynamic. And it, it, and it is to an extent in, in Japanese wrestling, too, more than people want to give it credit for. But at the same time, um, you know, kind of like the, the, you know, you've heard it a million times, Tokan, Strong Style, whatever. I mean, it's just kind of the, the whole idea of fighting spirit. And, and, and you know, I, I found something appealing about that, and I found it kind of natural to kind of gravitate towards that style of wrestling and, and try to express that in, in the things that I do in the ring. And, um, I mean... I think I've had to modify it a bit to, you know, to fit, you know, American taste. But, um, you know, I, I, I just kind of hope I'm doing a good enough job, and I, you know, I just kind of want to continue, kind of, 
like I said, I, I do. I'm a big, I'm a big experimenter, and uh, you know, for every you know good match, people see me, and I'm sure there's about three more kind of real weird out there matches because I was trying something new, and it's just uh, it's it's, it's a process of trial and error, but hopefully uh, you get it right and uh, it clicks with the audience and everybody enjoys it. Do you have any any opponents in TNA that like you know they they've been putting you in with um you know um I guess it's you know like Saban and. Uh, Daniels and Styles a lot. Is there are there any opponents like the guys that you see on the roster that that you're really looking forward to getting a chance to wrestle? Um, yeah, I, I've said this a few times um, to different people, and I mean, Bonnie Brown is, is a guy that I think um, I could. I don't know. I, I, I kind of see like a lot of potential to kind of do something really cool there with him. Um, you know, I'd love I'd love to get in there and work with Jeff a, a bit, and um, um, you know, all the X Division guys. I mean, that's kind of like a, a a no-brainer. I mean, it, it, they're acclimatized to it, and I mean, they, I've been wrestling guys like them for the past, you know, two or three years. Guys, you know, a lot of the young, hungry guys who, you know, just kind of taking a more innovative approach, I guess, to wrestling. At the same time, I like to get in there with, uh, you know, with, I guess, I guess some of the more traditional heavyweights and and some of the, you know, the more veteran guys in the company, just to see what I can I can produce with them. Okay, we're going to go ahead to a break right now. And we'll start taking phone calls right after the break. Uh, we've got every line lit up. You're listening to the Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, with Brian Alvarez, a figure for weekly. Our guest is Samoa Joe from TNA. This coming Sunday, he's going to be wrestling Jushin Liger. Is this the first time you're going to wrestle him? Joe? Yes. Is this the first time you're um, going to wrestle Jushin Liger? Uh, yes. Okay, um... When was um what it would have been when you first became familiar with him? Um, did you watch him on tapes or was it um you know maybe I don't know I I know I think you've met him before at the dojo right? Yeah yeah I've, I've met him before at the dojo and uh, spent about a week with him you know and uh, doing helping do his training seminar and stuff so and I met him a few times actually before that too so I mean as far as get becoming familiar with him I think I saw him in WCW a while back and then of course when I started working for New Japan and watch more Japanese stuff I mean you see a tremendous amount of him. What happened with the LA Dojo? Um, it's still going. Um, you know, uh, you know the focus is off it now because Simon's. Uh, you know, he spends most of his time in, in, in Japan uh, uh, working there, so uh, uh, it's still it's still going. There's there's still you know uh, training guys out there. I believe Kendall Koshin's uh, uh, heading up operations down there with Dave Marquez. So um, you know they're they're still uh, they're still floating. It's just a lot of the guys that were formerly there are really really busy kind of working now. So it's it's uh, you know. It's, Roster's changed down there a bit. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Joe first. You're going to be first up in Colonia, New Jersey with Joe. Uh, John in Colonia, New Jersey. John, what's going on? Hi, Dave. Uh, hi, Samoa Joe. Big fan. I've seen you like... Uh oh, we can't hear him. Um, you have to, John, you have to speak up, and they may not be able to hear you, but I'll, I'll you know, give the question to Joe if uh, if he can't hear you. So go, go ahead. Okay, I just want to ask Samoa Joe, out of all the Japanese wrestlers he, he uh, knows of, who would he most like to face other than Liger and Kobashi, obviously? Okay, he wants to know if, um, aside from Liger and Kobashi, are there any Japanese wrestlers off the top of your head that you would really like to face? Yeah, you know, a, a guilty pleasure of mine is, is Tenru, and I'd, I'd love to wrestle wrestle him. Um, uh, you know, I'd really like to wrestle Sasaki at some point. I really, I mean, I've really been liking uh, some of the stuff he's been doing recently, especially since he became a freelancer and kind of reinvigorated himself and then reinvented himself. So, I mean, those are kind of kind of like I guess the two big names I would like to work in. I mean, a lot of people they they say you know uh, you know what about you and Kawada? I mean, that's kind of yeah. I mean, that's another one I'd, I'd really love love to kind of get into and do. Mm. Uh, John, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. We're going to go to Rusty in New Jersey. Rusty, what's going on? <laughs> hey, Joe. Uh, can uh, Joe hear me? Or are you relating the questions, Dave? Uh, Joe, can you hear me? Uh, I, I, can, I can hear him. I can hear him. Okay, good. Go, okay, speak hey, up. Hey, Joe, and... it's Rusty. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, what's up, Rusty? Hey, what's up? I just wanted to say, uh, number one, uh, how bad did your chest feel after the Kobashi match in New York? Um, it, it, uh, you know, it was pretty raw. I won't, I won't lie to you. When I got to, when I got to Australia, everybody kind of looked at me in horror because I, I, you know, I busted blood vessels over my chest, and uh, it was pretty bad. But you know, uh, hey, you know, that's uh, that's 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 the price you pay to get in there at the best and have a little bit of fun. So I mean, uh, uh, it, 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 it was it was, it was one of the best matches I've ever seen, man. It was great. Yeah, and I uh, just wanted to say real quick, uh, out uh, another thank you publicly, uh, Dave. You might not know this, or you, of course you don't know this, but uh, last year uh, Joe put uh, me and my wife on his guest list to see a show at the Rexplex because he knew we were broke, 
and uh, took the time in this busy schedule to greet us and meet us before and after. You're a class act, man. Thanks. No, no problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, well, now you know, Dave. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> cool. Later. Okay. Thanks see you, man. All right, we're going to go to Todd in Staten Island, New York. Todd, what's going on? Hey, how's it going, everybody? Going good. Uh, good. Well, Joe, what's going on? I was at the uh, the October 1st show. I just wanted to say it was unbelievable. I felt it was, you know, such a cheap show. I felt we were almost cheating you because, you know, it was such a cheap show. But uh, <laughs> did you feel like you're getting, you know, it's a lot of pressure going on. You feel uh, finding all these guys, or is it, uh, you know, is an honor to work with everyone? Um, it definitely is an honor to get get the opportunity to work. You know, uh, against the Kobachi. I mean, that's just something a lot, not a lot of U.S. workers uh, really are going to get get the chance to do, especially in kind of like a showcase match where it's uh, you know, it's one on one, and he's going to pull out all the stops, and he did. And um, I mean, uh, as far as pressure, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure there, but at the same time, I mean, uh, you know, I, I it's it's a pro wrestling match. It's it's what I do for a living, and you know, I'm going to go out there and try to deliver on it, and and you know, do what I do the best that I can. And uh, I mean, I. I I generally am, am happy with, with, you know, what me and Kobashi did in there, and uh, I mean, I, I look forward to doing it again in the future. I mean, he uh, he, he was nice enough after the match to kind of look at me in private after, you know, we, we spoke after the show was over and said that, you know, he definitely wanted to do it, you know, one more time in the U.S. because he had, you know, such a good time uh, time out here wrestling and stuff. So, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe there's there's maybe there's another one on the horizon. Oh, that would be that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any chance you will be at the next uh, New York Ring of Honor show? Uh, yeah, very good chance I'll be at the, but more, 99.9% percent i will probably be there. <laughs> All right, great. Can't wait to see you there. Uh, everyone keep up the good work. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Very welcome. You know, like with, 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 with Kobashi, do you think that he realized what, what, what he was going into? Because, I mean, again, I haven't seen the match that he had in, um, Eldon, Missouri, which was the week before, but I'm presuming, you know, the atmosphere was entirely different. I mean, it was, you know, I mean, this was, this was, in, a, in front of an audience that, that knew completely who he was, you know, as opposed to, you know, just kind of being an anonymous Japanese wrestler who's, a, you know, putting on a great match for the people. You know you know what I mean? It, it's, you know, the Ring of Honor thing because of the nature of those fans. I mean, did, did he know what he was in for as far as um, crowd reception, I guess? Uh, no, I don't really think he did. I think, uh, I think you know, he was, he was expecting to come out here and, and, and he, 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 he really had a, you know, I'm going to try my hardest type of attitude. And, uh... He came out, and uh, I told him, you know, uh, you know, prior to the match, you know, we had a, a lunch meeting, uh, and I told him, I said, you know, uh, there's trans there. I said, you're going to have a lot of fans here tonight, and you know, like all Japanese guys, of course, they humbly were like, no, 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 no. But it, you know, he generally didn't believe that. He thought a few people might know him, or you know, some faces here and there. But uh, he was, you know, you could tell he was genuinely amazed by the crowd reaction. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, gotta get rid. Well, okay, it's gone. <laughs> Go on. Okay, go no, go ahead, Joe. So, but he 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 was genuinely amazed by the the crowd reaction, and uh, I, you know I think it, it really charged him up for the for the match that night. Okay, we're going to go to Jason in Nashville. Jason, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? I uh, I've been going to matches for thirty years. I just want to tell Joe I thought that was uh, the best live match I'd ever seen, and uh, the Kobashi match. Yes, absolutely. You went you went from Nashville to New York to see it. Yeah, I sure did. Wow. <laughs> I, I, hey, listen, listen. Listen, I was kicking myself for not going myself because it's, you know, it's like it's one thing when there's a match where, you know, it surprises you don't know about it ahead of time. But, you know, I mean, I knew about it ahead of time. And, and I, you know, a week before, Gabe was, te- you know, kind of telling me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like I, I can't say I, you know, it, you know, matches like that don't come along, you know, every week or, or even every year. So, you know, but go ahead, Jason. I'm sorry. Well, I, I'd never even seen Joe on tape or on television. And, uh, I mainly went for Kobashi, and I just, uh, man, he more than held up his end, and uh, it was just a tremendous physical match. And uh, besides his chest, I was wondering if he had any other injuries from the match, because he took a hellacious suplex right on his head, and uh, I was just wondering if he had any other injuries from the match. Uh, the neck was sore, for sure. I mean, uh, he, you know, when when they say Kendo Kobashi dumps you on your head, he... He does a damn good job of doing it. So, uh, I mean, that that, that would hurt. Uh, you know, my major problem was I was really scared about the second night was that uh, I hurt my ankle pretty bad. I, I kind of jammed it up. I, I, I couldn't tell you where it happened. And, um, you know, I, I limped to the arena the next day, and um, luckily, you know, um, got some ice on it, and the swelling went down, and 
I was able to go for the tag match. But I mean, that was that was pretty much the only major major injury that I, that I really came away with. Did Kabashi lose a tooth? Yeah, uh, according to his translator, you know, he was uh, he was adamant that uh, you know it, it kind of just happened. They don't know how, but uh, he was signing autographs at the autograph table after the uh, after the New York show, and uh, he still had his mouthpiece in from the match. And he pulled out his mouthpiece, and, and one of his teeth was embedded in the mouthpiece. So uh, mm. we're, it's still kind of a mystery how it happened, but uh, you know. I have to say, you know, when you see the match, you could, you could probably see the potential for something like that happening. Mm-hmm. Well, I, just, I hope it translates as well in video because it was just the most physical match I've ever seen, and uh, I just want to thank Joe. It was a tremendous effort. Wow. Well, th- thank you for coming out from Nashville. I mean, uh, with uh, fans like you, that stuff like that wouldn't be possible. <laughs> that's a, that's a, you got to be impressed with people coming from because you know people came from all over North America for that match. Yeah, I was in, in the world. I mean, we had people from Scotland there and. Uh, um, I, I think we had a few English fans there. I mean, it was, it was really a, uh, it was really shocked to see uh, kind of like the the wide variety of people who really turned out to see the show. And um, I mean, it's, it's it kind of adds fuel to the fire when you when you're going into a match like that. Yeah, we're gonna go to Andrew in New York. Andrew, what's going on? Hello. Hi there. Yeah, I have a question for Joe. I was at both, actually, all three of the Ring of Honor Buffalo shows, and I've noticed that there's been a lot of problems with the fans in Buffalo. And I wonder, for Joe, what's an appropriate level of fan interaction with the talent? Um, I'll tell you right now, um, I, I threw out one fan personally because he was going to throw a bunch of junk in the ring um, that really had, you know, it just you know, it just was that excusable. And in this last show, we had a fan that actually had hit one of the wrestlers uh, during one of the six-way matches. And, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm overprotected to a fault of, of all my coworkers and stuff, especially when it comes to stuff like that. And... Um, you know that that's an inappropriate level of fan interaction. I mean, uh, you can come, you can boo, you can hiss, you can say anything you want, uh, chant anything you want. That's all fine and dandy. But when it comes right down to it, uh, the minute that you know you're doing stuff and it's actually affecting the wrestlers physically in the ring, or you or you come over the barricade, or you take a shot at a wrestler or anything like that, then you know you you've overstepped your bounds. And uh, I have no problem really, you know, uh, letting people know that they've overstepped their bounds. And uh, no matter what it takes to do that. Well, you know, I mean, that's you know, pretty much what if you know, as far as like, uh, there's 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 obvious common sense, you know, as far as, you know, you if you hit someone, I mean, come on, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. I mean, everyone knows what you know. You, you everyone knows the ticket allows you to cheer and boo and do whatever you want, but it doesn't allow you to do anything that puts that that like affects physically the performance of the match or, you know, like throwing something in there that where someone can slip and get hurt because that's that's BS too. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna go ahead to a break right now. We got a couple. Uh, any, oh, Andrew, you want to hang on? I guess he's gone. Okay, we will be back with more right after this. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Christian Liger on the TNA Bound for Glory pay-per-view. And uh, also... Real quick, if you uh, want to get the latest in pro wrestling news, you can always go to www.wrestlingobserver.com. And there's also info on how to subscribe to Wrestling Observer and Figure Four Weekly that Brian and I both do. And uh, we're back with Joe. You know, um, did you? What, where did your background as far as um, being a fan or as far as training with mixed martial arts start? Um, I, I grew up doing judo um, all my life under David Nueva out here in Garden Grove. And... Um, uh, where the studio was, and I mean, I, 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 judo was kind of like always a, a thing that I kind of grew up doing. And, you know, I was a California State junior athletic champion and stuff, and uh, uh, it's something I had a real big passion for. It was a lot of fun. For, um, you know, of course, when uh, mixed martial arts kind of exploded on the scene and and Gracie's and jiu-jitsu came about, I mean, it kind of piqued my interest because you know judo and jiu-jitsu do have a lot of similarities. They're so closely tied together. So um, you know, it was really, really, it was really, really interesting to me. And, um, you know, when I first started out wrestling, I kind of just, you know, went with the flow and tried to, you know, just learn how to be a pro wrestler. And then uh, later on down the line, I started trying to kind of incorporate a few things here and there that I'd, that I'd learned kind of growing up and, and, and training with various people. Uh, my main guy I train with now is Justin McCulley, um, who, you know, uh, works with Team Punishment and, and trains Tito and stuff. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a part-time pastime and hobby and passion for me. Now, did, did, you, did you wrestle high school? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Were you, um, 
Were you, someone, someone mentioned to me that, uh, were you coached by, uh, like, D David Abbott's brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was my football coach, actually. Uh, oh, okay. But the funny thing about Tank is that his, his father was my teacher in high school. Really? And his older brother was my, was one of my head football coaches, uh, growing up. So, um, you know, and then, uh, of course, you know, everybody, when you wrestled at, at, at the high schools around in Huntington Beach, everybody wrestled at Golden West College, and that's where, you know, guys like Tito and, and Tank and all those guys still worked out and all came up, and that's how that whole, uh, I guess, Huntington Beach mixed martial arts scene kind of came about. Now, um, you started um, you started out also with John Cena. Um, are, you, are you still in contact with him, or is his schedule just too busy now? Uh, his schedule's crazy, but, I mean, we still, you know, we still, uh, you know, shoot notes to each other every once in a while and check on each other, and then... And it, you know, on occasion have a, the rare brief conversation, but I mean, I'm I'm real happy for him. Like, he's doing great, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, whenever we get the chance, we definitely uh, we definitely uh, definitely definitely try to hook up and and and, uh, and catch up and uh, see how each other's doing. Did uh, did you like uh, see the stardom in him pretty quick? Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I saw it more from the fact that I know you know how hard of a worker John is, and John will, you know, he 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 really when he kind of gets a goal in his head, he keeps going after it till he. You know, achieves it one way or another. So, I mean, uh, I mean, I always knew John would go far in this business, but uh, you know, I'm just on you know tenacity alone. Yeah, because his, I mean, his his schedule. I mean, people know his schedule. You know, you know, he's wrestling four nights a week, but they don't realize that. You know, I mean, I know because I see the media stuff he's doing, and then you know, having to promote when he when he had to promote oh, yeah. the record. I mean, I mean, his schedule is insane. Oh he, yeah, he, I mean, the, I mean, you know, the wrestling schedule with WWE is is, is hectic enough alone. But then you add all these media appearances, promotions for his records, you know, uh, the, the the movie stuff he's been doing. I mean, he's he's a busy, busy guy, but, you know, uh, probably a lot more busy than anybody has any idea. Yeah. We're going to go to Tony in Saugus, Massachusetts. Tony, what's going on? Hey, Samoa Joe. Hey, uh, Dave, how you doing? We're doing good. Uh, quick question, Dave. Any word on uh, Jim Ross? What's going on? Um, as far as um, he's having surgery on, I believe it is Tuesday, but I know it's during this coming week. He's having surgery on his colon. And he'll be out for a while, and then uh, after that, I mean, seriously, it's anyone's guess. I mean, right. I mean, it's anyone's guess what's happening next. Um, okay, and uh, my next question was, uh, I'm going to get to you, Samoa Joe. That'll be my last question. I'll save the best for last. Um, Dave, uh, do you think Vince McMahon, um, if he had other interests in life, do you think maybe he wouldn't be making some of the decisions he's making um, if he had maybe other hobbies? I think you mentioned it uh, before. Do you, do you think he reacts a little bit differently because... The business is his life. Well, you know, every every part of your life affects how you make decisions. So, yeah, I mean, if he had different hobbies, um, he would. I think I I, I agree he would. Um, you know, it. You know, everything that you you see kind of affects you, and and so yeah, you know, you're shaped by your surroundings. But at the same time, for him to have gotten where he has, right? Yeah. You know, you know, I mean, if he if he had about ten different hobbies and he was dividing time with them and not focusing on wrestling. I don't think that he would have been as successful at it, you know. But then again, those things that you learn from other places, you know, they they can help you too. So it, it's, you know, there's, you know, they, they, there's both sides of the coin. I mean, it's 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 good in some ways and it's not good in other ways. And when they say he's a workaholic, I mean, he doesn't just do think about creative. I mean, he's involved in all the aspects of the business, right? I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. About creative all day. Yeah, you know, Vince Vince doesn't sleep much, if any, and um and. You know, I mean, and he's done this for, well, I mean, he's run the company since 82, so that's 23 years. And he's and never got burned out. I wonder, you know, I, I don't I don't know the answer to that, if he's if he's ever gotten burned out. Logically, one would think that there would have been times that he did. And, um, you know, and you can look at, you know, if you look at the creative ups, ups and downs. I mean, there's certainly periods where, you know, he wasn't as good as other periods. So, um, you know, I, I, you know I, I would think that you almost have to, you know, like, with, with that kind of thing, I mean, no matter what, and no matter how successful you are, I mean, the most successful, you know, the most successful people that I've seen in, in, in any walk of life, and I'm not just talking about pro wrestling, but sports or anything, their drive is incredible, right, yeah. but, but, but that drive also um, leads you to disappointment because you want it so bad, and it leads you, you know, and, and eventually when you're going so hard at something, there's, gonna, there's, there's just going to be periods of burnout. Mean, right, exactly. You know, you know, we talked, you know, Joe earlier today, I mean, like, you know, I mean, he he had you know great year in the ring. I mean, just fantastic. But but yet you know you you get that feeling that like wow you know I mean is this what I want to do with the rest of my life? There's more to life than just wrestling. You know you start asking yourself these questions. Yeah, and Samoa Joe, my question to you is: Every week I read the Observer, and I read about uh, how the Japanese media uh, covers pro wrestling, and you know it's like a foreign world from the United States. 
how does the media treat you um, in Japan? I'm, I'm always curious how, this, how do the, the Japanese media works over there. Um, you know, the, the media cover it much like a sporting event. I mean, they, uh, they're on site. They, uh, you know, they're doing interviews uh, backstage with the wrestlers, and it's, and it's, uh, it's a much more formal process as far as uh, you know, the Japanese media compared to the American media, which is you know, mostly self-created anyways uh, right. within uh, their promotions themselves. Um, you know, I, I, I'm lucky enough to have a pretty good rapport with a lot of reporters because of all the, you know, the media work that we do with the dojo, and you know, the reporters know me, and, and I know all of them, so it, 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 it works out nice. And they uh, protect the business, right, to, to every extent? Yeah, for the most, yes. And if something uh, goes wrong, if something uh, dies, I mean, they kind of cover it up so they don't expose the bad. Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes and no. Yeah. That, 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 see, it's it, it's it's very. Uh, the Japanese media is different. Yeah, it's a very tongue-in-cheek protection, uh, and and the way they write things and the way they word things, uh, the people who are in the know know what they mean, and people who don't uh, kind of pass it off as you know. Uh, yeah, they, 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 you know, they, you you can read between the lines there too. Because we, yeah. I mean, we still don't know how Hashimoto died, right? Um, didn't he die? Um, you know, I, I I wrote the whole thing. I I don't. That wasn't that wasn't that big of a mystery. I think he had a heart. Was it a heart attack, yeah. Joe? So, uh, or an aneurysm? I believe. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you knew you knew him very well, didn't you? Yeah, I uh, knew him very well. I mean, uh, worked under him, and uh, you know, I had a pretty good uh, uh, you know uh, personal relationship with him. You know, like just person to person uh, outside the ring and stuff. And uh, I mean, it, it it was a big shock when he died. You know, and. Uh, I, I like I said I, I hadn't really agreed much with the way that he was currently handling things, especially when it came to zero one and vacating the company and all the the scandal and, and stuff about that. But um, you know, I, I, seeing him pass away was, was really rough. And Joe, do you think maybe if there wasn't so many promotions in Japan, if they just whittled it down to maybe three or four instead of what fifty days, that they would that the business would increase because they'd have the bigger stars in all you know one group or or a few groups. It seems like there's so many. It's it's unbelievable. To, to an extent, I mean, uh, I think that you know when you take a lot of these major names who you know have their political uh, squabbles with within promotions or whatever, and they for a job they start their own group. I, I mean, it definitely waters down the industry a bit uh, as far as fan base in Japan. And you know, I think I think uh, I think the industry will you know, definitely dictate you know the the reconsolidation of talent as far as it goes in companies. And, and you know, uh, I, I think. Uh, the, the expansion is brought on by a lot of things, you know, but for the most part, yeah, I think if, if there were less promotions in Japan and, and the stars are more focused and, and maybe a top two or three promotions, that um, business would be a lot better. Well, Joe, congratulations on the Kobashi match. I mean, uh, I haven't seen it, but uh, you just seem like you're, you're starting to get your due, and I'm glad you didn't quit the business. Well, I'm, I'm glad I didn't either. <laughs> a great Ultimate war issue, and thanks a lot. Oh, thanks very much. Okay, um... You know, he brought something up as far as like uh, Japan and and everything. Um, when you were with um, with Hashimoto, I mean, how much of kind of like the you know you know like it, it, there's a similarity in the sense of you know your portrayal is of a really tough guy and 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 portraying you know you know more leg, you know more legitimate fight, not a lot of um, comedy in in your in your presentation. And ha, are you, is everyone there? Yeah. Okay. And Hashimoto. Um, I mean that's, that's that's similar to the, the role that Hashimoto played, you know. And, and I mean Hashimoto, of course, wasn't known for having great physique. And and in in a sense, the first time everybody sees you wrestle, um, for the first I don't know five minutes or so, it's always like the physique, you know, start, you know, because you don't look like every other professional well, wrestler. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but once you know once they start watching your match, you know, no one no one you know the, the physique thing goes away right away. But I mean, like like uh, what have you taken from him? And and do you do you Look at yourself as far as in the ring as a performer. Looking at Hashimoto as kind of like a role model of where you wanted to get. Um, I, I definitely uh, like picked up and, and, and learned a lot from him, especially with mannerisms and and, and technique to an extent. But it, it was more, you know, Hashimoto really was never about technique. I mean, he had one of the ugliest arm bars you ever see, and you know his, his DDT was real nice. But I mean. Uh, you know, definitely the way that he portrayed himself in the ring, the way that he, he conveyed himself to an audience is something that um, I kind of look upon it, and, and, it, and it does inspire me. And it was kind of a, a precursor to kind of what I wanted to do as far as uh, what I wanted to present in the ring. So, I mean, he, he does have a heavy influence in that aspect. We're going to go to Carlo in West Haven. Carlo, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, guys? Going, doing good. good. 
Anyway, Dave, I want to ask you a question. Uh, well, what happened to Tom Zink? I, I never hear from him anymore. He used to, you know, he always used to, um, he had this long commentary for a while on his web sh- website where he bashed everybody and stuff, and he, he seems to be gone from the scene now. He was silenced. Yeah, he was silenced, I think, by uh, WWE attorneys, maybe. Oh. I, I don't know. I don't know that as a fact, but I, I presume that that's what happened, yeah. You heard anything from him, or? Um, I haven't heard from him, um, you know, I, yeah, I haven't heard from him lately, no. No, I mean, he's... I know he still keeps up with everything, though. Um, so he's around. You know, he's nothing. Nothing bad has happened to him. Uh, I really like your uh, article on the Ultimate Warrior. Thanks. I was wondering how much more of a draw was uh, Sting than the Ultimate Warrior. I don't know that Sting was ever. You know, I mean, they're both. Um, it, it's it's hard to say. I mean, obviously Sting had the longer career on top um, than Warrior because Warrior walked out so many times. But I mean, if you if you look at them. Sting at its peak, when you talk about that 97 at the end, he probably at that period was bigger than Warrior ever was. But, you know, that was like kind of one match and just that one angle. Um, you know, certainly in the late 80s, Warrior was bigger than Sting, though. I mean, you know, because he was in New York and uh, he was on top and it was a bigger promotion. And um, So it's, it's hard for me to say, like, you know, one was a bigger draw. They both, they both did real well for themselves. You know, obviously Sting had, you know, Sting was the better wrestler and had the longer career. Uh, is it true uh, Vince has a brother, Rod? Vince has a brother. I forget what his name is. I think it's Rod. Yeah, he's not involved in the business at all. Not whatsoever. You know, it's funny. You never hear about him at all. But yeah, I. Is he close with Vince at all? Do you know? Or? I I probably not. You never hear about him. I mean, it was it was surprising to me because I don't think I ever even knew about him existing until Vince Senior passed away in '84, and they mentioned that he had two sons, and there was the other son, and we never even knew he existed. So I don't I don't know if they grew I don't even know if they grew up together. I I presume they did, but. You know, Vince never talks about him either. So I, I don't know much about Rod. I just know that he that there, he's, he exists. I have a final question. Uh, do you know if Kevin Von Erich would have been a, a star anywhere else? Uh, if they gave him a chance and, um, you know, he did, well in, he did well in Japan. He did well in St. Louis. He did well in places that his father wasn't the promoter. Now, you know, the fact that he had that name helped an awful lot when he was young. You know, he got breaks that other guys weren't going to get. But, um... He had a unique style for the time, and he was a fantastic athlete. I mean, um, I don't think he had the heart for the business that a lot of other people had, and that's probably why his career didn't last as long as, as others. Do you, you think they'll buy the, the Masters from him? Or? I, I think both sides want that eventually. So, yeah, I, I think the deal will probably happen, yeah. There was some awesome tape there in that in that era. Okay, we got to get running, okay? Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. Okay, you're very welcome. We're back right after this. You're listening to Wrestling Observer Live on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Okay, welcome back to Wrestling Observer Live. Dave Meltzer, editor of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter with uh, with Brian Alvarez of Big Four Weekly and, of course, Samoa Joe. We've only got about a minute left. Joe, real quick, if I asked you what you think is the most important match of your career so far, or uh, what would you say? Uh, the the Neon Punk second match. Uh, the, 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 second, the 60 minute match? Yeah. Any any reason why you would say that one? Um, I, I just think it kind of thrust uh, my work more towards the forefront. I mean, I think. Uh, People genuinely enjoyed it, and, and uh, it kind of was a kind of was a like I said a, a precursor to, to the stuff that I'm doing now. Okay, we are totally out of time. I want to thank Joe for being here, and good luck on Sunday. Uh, one of the bigger matches of your career, I think, um, with Jushin Liger, big stage, biggest pay per view of TNA's history, and uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks uh, live here on Wrestling Observer Live here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network.